All right, everyone, Cinephile Mike, your friendly neighborhood Cinephile, is here, and it is day 56 of award season review season two. And you know what today is? It's Tuesday. What does that mean? Da -da 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 -da. That's a bad drum roll, but new theme this week. Ah, so now I have covered almost all of the films that are Oscar nominated, save the shorts and a couple of the international features. So I don't have access to some of them yet. They're coming. So those reviews will be here before Oscars, I promise. But keeping with moving through award season, right? It's more than just about the Oscars. And there are some other gems that don't always make it to award season, like Oscar award season. So I like to recognize them in this series. That's why we get to do so many. I mean, in total, there are over 250 films nominated, and I'm only covering 96 of them. So here we go. This week is dedicated to British Indie Week. So we did an Indie Week earlier this season for the films that were nominated for the American Independent Spirit Awards. So now we're going to hop over to the pond. All of the films I talk about this week were nominated for British Indie Film Awards, and they may have won. Those awards have already happened. They may have other nods. Maybe there's some Oscar clout. <laughs> uh, and there could be some BAFTA recognition, as the BAFTAs are the British Oscars. So, first up, Picture House Entertainment's Grapper. Written and directed by Charlotte Reagan, the film had a small domestic release late summer, uh, early fall of 2023 in select theaters. So, it only made $213,960 at the domestic box office. And it made $1,101,399 internationally for a grand total of $1,315,359. Now, for the British Independent Film Awards, Scrapper tied for, as the second most nominated film with 13 nominations. The film was nominated for Best British Independent Film, Best Breakthrough Producer, which was its only win of the 13, Best Director, Best Screenplay, as well as Best Debut Screenwriter, and several performance awards, including Best Casting, which is an Oscar they should give, Best Breakthrough Performance for Lola Campbell, and Best Joint Performance that is shared by Campbell and Harris Dickinson. Additionally, the remainder of the nominations were on the production side. The film was nominated for Best Production Design, Best Costume Design, Best Cinematography, Best Sound, and Best Original Music. Also, for the British Independent Film Awards, writer-director Charlotte Reagan was also one of the nominees for the Douglas, Douglas Hickox Award, which is an award that recognizes British directors for their debut fiction feature film. Now, for the BAFTAs, Scrapper uh, has one sole nomination. It is nominated for Outstanding British Film of the Year. And was named one of and it was named one of the top ten independent films of 2023 by the National Board of Review. So, Scrapper <laughs> is a story of Georgie, played by newcomer nominee Lola Campbell. Georgie, 12 years old, has been living alone in her East London home since her mother Vicky sadly passed away. Now, how has she been surviving? Well, she's stealing and selling bicycles and getting food from her friend Allie, the one and only person. Who knows the truth of her situation? And, you know, she informs social services. Who knows that her mother is gone? And this film is a definite, interesting <laughs> perception of the British social services. Um, she tells them that her uncle, this non-existent uncle, is living with her. And she goes so far as to have convenience store um, clerks record messages that she can play to the social service. So, living her. Minimally, minimal life of survival. She is getting by with memories of her mom on her phone and keeping her home the way it was when her mom was there until the unexpected arrival of her estranged father, Jason, played by Harris Dickerson, Dickinson, my apologies, who has been off in Spain selling club tickets and trying to make a living. But now he's back. Georgie... Not sure if she can trust him upon arrival, does all she can to be rid of him. Now, Jason wants to be there for her now, but can he be trusted? I mean, he left when she was a baby. Does he have other motives? Why does he carry a bullet around in his pocket? Hmm. What will follow is the story of the child who had to grow up too fast and the adult who needs to grow up. This film is well-deserving of all of its nominations. It is a solid film that moves at a very quick 
crisp paced, about 83 minutes. And the chemistry between Campbell and Dickinson is charming, to say the least, if not fraught at moments when the film calls for it. Now, we have seen films like this before, and without spoiling too much, you know, as far as this relationship goes, there's only a couple of ways it can go. I mean, I'm not going to say what it is. I will say it's a very intimate film with crisp writing, and I'm kind of shocked. It didn't pick up more than just the best uh, Breakthrough Producer Award, although I haven't seen all of the other British indie films yet. I'm watching them and getting them ready for this week. Uh, so maybe it is fair. I can't fully judge that yet. But I do want to say, as a first-time filmmaker, Reagan makes quite a statement, and I almost wonder if we wouldn't have heard a little more about this film if it weren't kind of in the same vein as last year's Oscar-nominated After Sun, another British indie film that was all the rage that led Paul Mescal to his first Oscar nomination. Now, Dickinson is Jason. You know, he has turned in solid work over the last few years in films as such as Triangle of Sadness last year, where the crawdads sing, and this year's, well, last year's, this season's The Iron Claw, and continues to do some nice work here in a role that would have played a little jokey, but is truly grounded by his sincerity and how he's trying to play this father role. As for breakthrough nominee Campbell in her first film role, wow. She is a star in the making. The way this young girl presents this character going through the stages of grief after losing mom. Again, wow. <laughs> this film is a solid four-star film for me, and I'm looking forward to what Reagan gives us next. And if you would like to catch Scrapper, it is streaming exclusively on Showtime. All right, so there it is. It's a good start for British Indie Week. One down, six to go. As always, if you like what you heard here, please subscribe to the channel, spread the word, help get everything out there. You can follow me, Cinephile Mike, on all social media platforms and on Letterboxd. See you all tomorrow as I carry on with British Indie Week. Until then, this is Cinephile Mike saying take a break and watch something new.